Brewers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing okay. How are you? Pretty good. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Even with the AIDS? Even with the AIDS. Hey, mm-hmm. we're, we're making it, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I hate to... You brought this up right before the podcast, so... Um, but I, I hate to run with that because then I feel like we're ripping off part of the problem. Part of the, yeah, because that's that's Dave's and Dave and um, Robbie. Robbie's thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to steal their bit. No. So I don't really have AIDS. <laughs> no. Unlike Robbie. Unlike Robbie. Yeah. Yeah. Who's who's fighting the good fight? <laughs> uh, well. Where um do you want to just jump right in or we, we yeah to, or we gotta do some banter beforehand because uh, that's just what we're supposed to do. Uh we can jump on in, man. It's yeah. Been... Right, we're starting so late, I kinda wanna not be talking for an hour. <laughs> yeah. Tonight. Yeah, we getting a late start. I've had a lot going on, so kind of ran in and started getting it rolling. Yeah, so um I guess we start with the m- speaker. So we'll start with the speaker. Yeah, I may as well. Yeah, I mean, and it kind of leads to the next thing, which leads kinda, to the next thing. That's kind of my. I have a plan. <laughs> okay, all right, sort of. Michael with the plan. I like it. Yeah, this is unusual. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> Not really, but no. As far as with the speaker, like I don't know that there's really that much to say. I mean, we still don't have one. Yeah. Um, and I, I had heard earlier in the week, and I don't actually know because when I watched the news yesterday. Like, there was no coverage of what's going on with that. Everything, in fact, I think the whole half hour I watched was nothing but Israel. Yeah. Of course, it was BBC, so, you know, there's there's that. But I had heard... Yeah, because they don't care about our government, but they do. Because our they government do, is their government. I normally get, like, decent amount of information from about what's going on domestically here yeah. from BBC. So. Well, we know who's really in charge in England. Oh, yeah, exactly. Who's in charge everywhere? What are you talking about? Not quite everywhere. That's the problem, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, that is the problem. That, that creates the conflict. Yeah. Uh, um, so, yeah, uh, the the short version is after um, the Republicans decided to kick out, what's his name? McCarthy. Yep. Uh, then S- Steve Scalise was the kind of the front runner, yeah. but he wasn't getting enough support and he dropped out. And I think with the excuse of his health issue, maybe issues or something. I mean, I, I, I thought they were pretty open about it. They just weren't going to get the votes, but yeah. That. So then Jim Jordan steps in, who's got even less support. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know what the plan was exactly, um, but he lost the vote Tuesday. Yeah. And so now we still don't have a speaker. But this is this is good news for us libertarians and anarchists everywhere because yeah. without a speaker they can't bring anything to the floor i guess yeah well they really can't do anything and particularly anything with money yeah and that's fantastic news because um they're really trying to um to put together a huge military aid package yeah that's going to cover everything um and in fact Jim Jordan was even on board with it even though he's opposed to money for Ukraine he said that he'd be willing to put forward a bill that combined um Ukraine and Israel uh military aid yeah. and there's actually also talk of having a th- a three-part military aid single bill that has money for Ukraine money for Israel and money for Taiwan Let's just give them all what they want. Yeah. Just fund the wars all over the wor- world. Like, and, literally, like, every war, we're going to just fund it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Janet Yellen said, uh, well, of course that we can afford to fund two wars at the same time. Which is, it's, yeah, because I, I had seen that, that she had said that, too. And that really, like, I don't know, that really grinds my gears because she's the one, like, that controls all of this. Like, she should be the person to be like, dude, we can't do this. Are you crazy? Yeah, well, I mean, but we can. All we got to do is print up the money, you see. Yeah, yeah, but like <laughs> she's the one that's like, like she should be the gatekeeper, though, to, to, because, I mean, she knows what's going to happen when well, we print all that money. But, you know, the inflation will be transient. Yeah, right, yeah. That, I forgot about that. Like, yeah. <laughs> that um, worked so well last time, right? Yeah, so uh, the the new talk is that um, the Biden administration is going to ask for a uh, hundred billion dollar military aid package. Wow. Um, now the story was for a little bit that, and I don't. This may not have changed. They may be trying to tone it down for now or or what have you. But um, 
a couple of weeks ago, he was going to be asking for a hundred billion dollars just for Ukraine. Yeah. Um, and, uh, 40 to 50 billion for Taiwan. And, yeah. um, Israel has just asked us for 10 billion. Wow. And that would be 10 billion on top of the 3.8 billion that we already give them every year. Yeah. Um, so be, you know, three years worth of <laughs> our normal military aid on top of this year's military aid Yeah. on, on top of this year's normal military aid. Yeah. Um, so that we can continue to fund them, uh, leveling Gaza city, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So putting all that together, you're looking like 150, $160 billion in military aid going to other countries. Well, not really other countries. Oh, well, <laughs> sure. Okay. So then th that's the excuse, right? Like yeah. that's what people are saying about it now. Like, well, you know, we're not actually sending that money to them. Um, we're using it to buy military equipment from American companies for them. Yeah. Uh, so that's better. So, you know, your money and my money goes towards the profits of Northrop Grumman and Lockheed Martin and General Dynamics and Raytheon and so forth. So yeah. why should we feel bad about that? It's making jobs for other people. Yeah. And those and those companies employ U.S. citizens. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's a win. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Uh, a, a small percentage of the American population um, does well at the expense of the rest of the American population. It really is amazing to me that they're actually float because they are. That's that's literally what's being floated out there right now mm -hmm. is that like that this is all justified because it's not really spent overseas. And it's like, yeah. come on. Well, OK, so this is. Yeah. And they're also they're not talking about the money that we're given to Ukraine just to fund their government and prop up small business and so forth in Ukraine. Yeah. Like that money's being spent in Ukraine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, well, yeah, that not, money's going there for sure. Yeah. Um, the military aid, we're just propping up our own military industrial complex. And it's, again, yeah. it's a, you know, I say this all the time. It's a way of, of privatizing public funds. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for the, you know, for the few people that are well connected. Yeah. Uh, and, and I guess this is the second time this week I've been reminded of um, Bastiat's uh, definition of the state. Uh -huh. um, Bastiat said the state is that institution through which everyone tries to live at the expense of everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. That's about sums it up. Mm -hmm. I think it's a pretty good, <laughs> pretty good definition. Um, and it's certainly the case here. So, yeah, $150, $160 billion going overseas. Sort of. Yeah. Or at least being pulled out of the uh, American private economy. Yeah. Um, and, Through. you know, to, to fund businesses that in a, in a free market wouldn't really even exist. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I'm sure that there would be some need for, for um, weapons manufacturers, but especially like your Raytheon's and your Lockheed Martin's and so forth, more than... 90% of their revenue comes from government contracts. Their business is entirely dependent on your tax money that you don't get any say in it going to them. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I just kind of feel like that money could be, I mean, if the government's going to take that money from me and spend it somewhere, I feel like there's better places they could spend it here. Oh, absolutely. Um, and ideally, they just wouldn't take that money from us in the first place. <laughs> All right. And we could spend it however we wanted. Yeah. And that would support the American economy as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just think about that cash infusion into the economy. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is the this is the that scene in the unseen, also Bastiat's thing. Yeah. Is that okay? Um, they're they're talking about what you can see with that money about oh well it's going back to american companies and american workers and and so forth but you're not seeing what's not being purchased and what businesses aren't being supported and what businesses end up failing because they didn't get the support because that money was taken out of the private economy exactly out of the free market and and spent by the government toward to its cronies yeah yeah, yeah. so i guess this is a little bit of an economics episode too i thought it was going to be all foreign <laughs> policy again yeah. Um, but yeah, there you go. Huge yeah. package. Huge package. <laughs> um, and of course the, uh, the other news is where some of the $10 billion of that is likely to go. Yeah. Um, the, you know, and I can't, it's hard to even find anything on Ukraine right now. 
Yeah. And I actually heard somebody talking about, well, you know, this is this is a chance to shift focus and kind of quietly withdraw from the Ukraine thing since it's obviously failing. Like it, the counteroffensive didn't go like we wanted. And, and I have heard a little bit, but I didn't get detail that um, that Russia's counter counteroffensive may have begun, at least that they've started to take back some territory um, or take additional territory, but yeah. it's not really known at this point whether this is really the counter counter offensive or just some like probing attacks to see where the Ukrainians are weak. See how they are. Yeah. yeah. But so, I in, can't really get detail because nobody's talking about nobody's this anymore. Nobody's talking about it. Um, so in in Ukraine, do they have like a fighting season like in other places? Like, are we going into a season where they can't do much because of the weather? Um, yeah, I think so. My understanding, at least based on what they were talking about last year, is that the fall weather is really wet. Yeah. And so Russia is at a... I, a ground in a ground war, you're at a disadvantage because the tanks can't roll easily across the the plains, and so yeah. the grasslands or whatever because they're muddy. Yeah, um, and that when winter comes and the ground freezes, then that then they makes can it start a, moving around. So yeah. so now would kind of be the lull then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Know I mean, I, sure. you would think I would. I've never been to Ukraine. Well, me either. But you would think I would remember from last year, but I just don't because yeah. this has been going on that long. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I, I don't. I don't really know what's going on in that conflict right now. Yeah. Except that clearly the Ukrainian counteroffensive didn't it's really stalled. achieve anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, not anything to speak of. They captured a couple of small villages, but they actually control less territory now than they did before the offensive began. Yeah. So I don't know. It's it's yeah. not going well. But anyway, this idea that we're that the U.S. is using it as a way of quietly withdrawing, I think, is fallacious. Um, I no. think that they're using it as an opportunity to quietly continue supporting. Yeah. Yeah, because the because it's not popular. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it's now like I say, they they want to. How do I, I'm trying to think of how to word it, but yeah, they they want to keep funding this war, but not really like tell us about it or whatever. Yeah, they don't want us to be focused on it. Yeah, exactly. Because there and are elections coming up, and that could yeah. this this like I say, supporting Ukraine could hurt some people that they need to stay in power. Well, and this is actually one of the frightening things about the combined, uh, the the huge package. Yeah. Um. Is that they clearly think that they... All right, so there's plenty of people that are against the Ukraine war. Yeah. But those same people are for Israel. Yeah. And so they see it as... Um, they see it as a more likely way of getting through Ukraine aid yeah. by packaging it up with the Israeli aid and the Taiwan aid. Because again, like... A lot of those people that are saying we need to stop giving money to Ukraine are saying in the next sentence because we need to be giving money to Taiwan to fight China. Yeah, yeah, that's the real fight. <laughs> yeah. So, but now we've got this this another new excuse. And regardless of what your constituents think about the um, supporting uh, Israel, Israel has a huge lobby in this country. Yeah, it funds a lot of campaigns. Yeah. Um, and, uh, the Israel lobby has proven, uh, in many times that it can swing an election. Oh, I don't doubt it. Not one bit. No. Um, and in fact, George HW Bush, uh, Bush, the elder, yeah. um, blames his loss in 92, 92. Yeah. 92. Yeah. Um, on the Israeli lobby because he was pushing for a two, uh, he, state. he pushed for a, a Palestinian state. Yeah. Um, and he was, you know, riding high on the Iraq war and had a lot of support and, um, and the Israeli lobby threw its support behind Clinton and that was it. And he lost. Yeah. yeah it was enough. Um, now I don't know that he, that, that actually ended like, you know, changed the results of the election, yeah. but it's not a bad argument. No, no. I mean, so, uh. Anyway, I, I, this actually worries me because it seems like they're going to have an easier time passing this giant bill funding everybody's wars yeah. um, than if they did them separately. Yeah, because I, I don't think there's a way they get them th all through separately. Yeah. Like, I just don't see it. But it, but if they kind of, like, pigeon everybody together, like, mm -hmm. this, because there's, 
Yeah. You don't, you don't want, there's certain ones you don't want to go against depending on who your constituents are and you know, what you're looking at. Yeah. So, um, so let's talk about Israel, Palestine some more. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right. So what excuses are being provided as to defend the Israeli response? Uh, I mean, I've, I've heard a few different things. I mean, the biggest one is that they just don't, that, that we can just mow these people down and it's fine. Like it, it basically the whole eye for an eye thing, like you did this to us, so we do this to you. Like, okay. Well, like that's the biggest one I've probably heard. I mean, that's uh, all right. So, okay, fine. Um, how many Israelis were killed in the attack from Gaza? Is like 1500? I think so. So yeah. Like roughly, roughly, yeah. Um, so when I looked this morning, so I guess as of last night, yeah, um, there were 3,500 dead in Gaza, uh, and uh, more than 1,500 of them were children, yeah. So now they've co- killed more Palestinian children than total Israelis were killed, yeah. Is that enough? I I mean, I, I, you know how I feel, so I don't, yeah. I mean, that's, well, okay, but that's, so, that's what you have to, but that is like the question you kind of have to pose to people who are like the, the big go Israel, go Israel mm-hmm. is like, okay, but, but when is enough enough? Yeah. Like, where, where do you draw the lines? And the truth is, is the people that I've talked to don't want to draw any lines. They're perfectly fine just mowing down Gaza and being done with it. Yeah. Well, I, I, I have heard that um you know that this is is justified because of the terrible atrocity that the the that Hamas specifically um Hamas uh visited on the Israelis yeah and it's not that I'm not sympathetic to the argument but um the first response i would say is one atrocity does not justify another atrocity yeah all right. And then I've heard, well, the um, Hamas was targeting civilians and Israel doesn't target civilians. But I don't actually draw a distinction between targeting targeting children and indiscriminate killing. To yeah. me, it's not really different. Like yeah. there's no moral high ground on indiscriminate killing. Yeah. It's not like they're trying not to kill civilians. I mean, yeah. they could they could make more of an effort not to like, and that's kind of what how I see it is that they're not they're just going through their killing like I say indiscriminately, yeah. And that's that's no different than if you targeted them. I mean, directly. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I um I don't know the truth of this, but uh, but I heard and I heard repeated multiple times from sources that I trust that something like fifty full family bloodlines have been eliminated. Wow. Through the bombings, yeah. um, like entire families wiped out. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know that 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 <laughs> I I just don't think that that's justified. I think that they know that, and the whole thing about well, you know, we are notifying them before we bomb their apartment complex. Yeah. But you've cut off fuel and water and food and it, like where? How do they go? Yeah. Well, how do they go? And that's that's the. The thing, like, the, like I say, I was hearing that, um, like, they were telling them to like leave the apartments and leave these areas and like, like go out into the woods or go to somewhere safe and blah blah. Mm-hmm. Like, well, what do you do when you get, when you get there? Like, you have no food, you have no shelter. Yeah. Like, you're supposed to just live in the woods until this is all over. Well, and you have no fuel to travel from one place. Like, you're on foot. Yeah, yeah. Like so you literally, you have to like, like run to to. It's just it's it's just not realistic. Yeah. So Israel told um, Palestinians in northern Gaza to go to southern Gaza, yeah, uh, because Hamas is mostly concentrated in northern Gaza. Yeah. But then Israel has been attacking travel routes from northern Gaza to southern Gaza. Yeah. Uh, you know, bombing the roads and so forth with civilians on them. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and they continue to bomb Southern Gaza where they told these people to go. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's no way out. Like there's, there's no, there's nothing these people can do. They're yeah. just, they're just hung. Yeah, I, I guess so. I, um, the other thing is, uh, oh gosh. All right. So let me, let me 
try and make notes so that I remember to address these things. Okay. Um, one of them is that uh, Israel has offered um, agreements and uh, the Palestinians refuse to, refuse to accept any kind of peace officer. So, you know, what else are you going to do? Yeah. Um, the other one is, uh, oh, it already slipped my mind when I was writing that one down. That's <laughs> like, how, how terrible is that? All right, let me, let me think here for a moment. Um, cause there's been another, uh, like really, um, really common, uh, justification, um, that's been given. Oh yeah. So, uh, another one is that there's no, um, all the, Pal- all the Palestinians in Gaza are to blame because they voted in Hamas. Yeah. Um, so the last vote was in 2006, I think. Really? It's been that long? Yeah. Um, and it was at that point that Israel withdrew technically, um, yeah. from the, uh, from the Gaza Strip, but that's also when they completely locked it down. Full siege. Yeah. Control everything going in and Coming out. Coming in and out, yeah. Um, and, uh... And Israel has encouraged the existence of Hamas as a counter to the PLO because yeah. the PLO is a secular organization, you know, with uh, what's the Mahmoud Abbas. He's like a guy wearing a three piece suit. Yeah. He, you know, um, and has been pushing for a two state solution. And you get to now point to Hamas as these jihadists, like is Islamist radicals, um, and say, well, this is why we can never have a two state solution. You know, that yeah, kind of thing. Like, yeah. and, and, um, if you think I'm making that up, actually Benjamin Netanyahu said it to a Likud party meeting. He said exactly that, yeah. that, that, um, that, uh, Hamas was a godsend to, to, you know, discourage any talk of a two state solution. Cause who could possibly negotiate with them? So, right. um, anybody who, you know, doesn't want, a Palestinian state should be thankful for Hamas and continue to fund, you know, to um, divert money to Hamas to keep them around because they're they're a foil, yeah, essentially. Um, and then, I, of course, I, I found this quote today um, in an article from Aaron Mate. I'd heard it before, but I, I couldn't find it again. Um, but I, I pulled this quote from Hillary Clinton in 2007 after Hamas won the elections in Gaza. Yeah. Um, and she said, uh, <laughs> she said, quote, if we were going to push for an election, then we should have made sure that we did something to determine who was going to win. <laughs> End quote. There's American democracy. For I was going to say, that's kind of how we do it here, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, there's no real point in including that. I just thought it was funny. Yeah. It, it's just illustrative of, of how we view um, democracy in, in other countries around the world. We just got to make sure that they vote right. Yeah, yeah. Well, and they'll say that here. I've heard Biden say that multiple times as far as um, with Ukraine, talking about how we've got, well, we just, we haven't sold it well enough. We haven't convinced the people to to, to support this, you know. Yeah. And it's like, well, maybe the people kind of know what's going on. <laughs> You're not going to, you only pull the wool over people's eyes for so long. And uh, as for the Israeli agreements, um, again, Netanyahu said in other um, Israeli officials have said as well that in all these, uh, these peace agreements, these, um, you know, to normalize relations or whatever, however they term it, yeah. um, they've always included poison pills that the Palestinians would never accept. Yeah. Um, knowing, you know, that, that they, they were would doing never. that. Well, and, th- um, and they have never offered a solution that includes, uh, um, Palestinian sovereignty that includes an end of the occupation. Yeah. That includes uh, the end of the settler colonialism. Like Mm -hmm. these things are kind of, they're the, the core of what the Palestinians are striving for. Yeah. Um, And they have never been a part of any agreement that, that Israel has offered them. But then Israel, you know, throws it out there. It's like, well, we keep giving them everything that they want and they won't ever (laughs) accept it, but they never given them what they want. Yeah. They've never offered what they want. Yeah. Because they've got the upper hand. Yeah. Israel does. Like they, they, they know that they've got, 
the upper hand here. Mm-hmm. As long as the U.S. is backing them, well, yeah, I mean that they they hold all the cards. Oh, and uh, then of course there's uh, why doesn't um, why don't the Palestinians try to pursue some kind of peaceful uh, protest in, instead of this violence all the time? Yeah. Um, actually, first let's play the Max Blumenthal clip here. Okay. Uh, where he talks about this is Max Blumenthal on the Scott Horton show on the anti-war radio, actually. Um, and Max Blumenthal is a, an American Jew has spent a lot of time over there, has written like two books on the um, Israel Palestine conflict. Um, and he's also, you know, one of the people that did the documentary that I mentioned over and over and over again last week uh, called Killing Gaza. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he first went over to Israel as part of the birthright thing that you know um american jews send their kids over to israel i guess when they are reach some age or something i don't know i, I don't yeah. i'm i didn't come from a jewish family so i don't, I don't, I don't know understand exactly this, how this yeah. works but um anyway it's like a tradition for american jews to send their kids over to israel to spend some time uh at some point and anyway um my point being here that the guy has credentials yeah and he's talking here um, both about the the reasons um, that uh, Hamas launched this attack and then kind of the mindset of them as well. So let's go ahead and play that clip. Yeah, let's do- and the goal was get as many prisoners out as possible and see if it's possible to use captives as leverage to relax the siege or change the strategic equation undermine the Abraham Accords, put Palestinians back on the map as, you know, in the 1970s, that was the point of taking hostages on planes, put the Palestinian cause on the map. And through ruthless activities that did lead to many civilian and innocent deaths over the years, that is how the world was forced to pay attention to possibly the most oppressed people on the planet through violence. And that's the only way that Israel has ever dealt with Palestinians is through violence. So I could go on and on about the politics of violence here, but none of this surprised me at all. Uh, It didn't even shock me to see some of the brutality displayed towards civilians by these fighters, given the conditions that they were raised in and what I know of young Palestinian men who I've interviewed in the Gaza Strip, how they think. And they think about witnessing their own family members be chopped to pieces by missiles, killed by snipers in front of their eyes. And that's how they emerged from tunnels and through fences with that in their mind. And that's something we need to recognize. So, um, yeah, this is about the, the, um, the action in a terrorist attack is in the reaction is you know, like the yeah. the front part of that is what it's about. But I I thought that last bit was really important that um, that they've seen all this violence inflicted on their own families by the Israelis, and yeah. that that's you know that's at the heart of the hatred. Yeah, I mean that's where it comes from. And then you know, same thing happens on the other side because of actions like this. Yeah, uh, but. While this is something unusual for the Israelis, this is something that's fairly common for the Palestinians. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, again, this is not to justify the action in any way. It, does, it doesn't justify the action, but it's not without reason. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, the other part of that is that why, why don't they do some kind of um, peaceful protest? And they've tried. Yeah. Um, you know, 2018 was the March of Return. I, I can't remember if I talked about this on the last podcast or not, but um, they did the March of Return in 2018, um, which, you know, at least after the last few years by American media standards would be considered a mostly peaceful protest. Yeah, all right. Uh, <laughs> we have a few of those. You know, like comparatively. <laughs> in this country, um, yeah. and, and I would say comparatively, it was mostly more peaceful than the mostly peaceful protests that occurred in this country in summer 2020? Yeah, it was 2020, yeah. Um, but, uh, and it, you know, it devolved into violence when the Israelis started killing the Gazans that were were marching in protest. Yeah. Um, so 
the the Israeli snipers were instructed to shoot anyone that that came within 300 meters of the partition fence. Yeah. And I'm calling they they they'll say border fence. It's not a border. Yeah. So I'm I'm very pointedly saying partition fence. Um because this is not another nation on the other side of this <laughs> yeah. yeah. of this fence. It's you know, it's occupied territory. Yeah. Anyway, um so anybody that closed within 300 meters, like more than three football fields length, yeah, a thousand feet roughly, yeah. Um, if they closed within a thousand feet of the fence, the snipers were instructed to shoot. Wow. Yeah. And um, they killed a couple hundred. Uh, and uh, there was a UN report on this that said that the IDF was targeting uh, medical workers and journalists. Really? And handicapped people, and yeah. also was um, was targeting the knees of young men, yeah. because uh, a cripple requires more resources than a corpse. Wow. Essentially, that like, I mean, like, you talk about brutality. Yeah, like, I can't even imagine that that way of looking at at things. That oh well, yeah. we know yeah. that. This, we can we can hurt their society more by doing this by creating a cripple than a corpse. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, like, there's a there's a history here. There's a context that matters in all of this. Yeah. And there's like real incredible brutality by Hamas against the Israelis, but there's real incredible brutality by the Israeli military against Palestinians generally too. Yeah. Um, and neither one just one atrocity does not justify another. Yeah. So what did you think of Biden's visit over there this week? Well, I think it was a disaster. Yeah. Um, well, I saw some clips from it and I mean, I, you know, we all know who Biden is and how he is, but he just looked like he was asleep at the wheel, mm-hmm. like literally like like mumbling into the microphone. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did think it was it was at least interesting, though, that he he tried to caution um, talking about what we went through after 9-11. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought there was at least something to kind of chew on there. You know? Yeah, I think that's a lot of lip service. Uh, uh, so I there were he was supposed to meet with other um, Middle Eastern leaders, some he, Arab leaders. And he didn't. And they, yeah, everybody canceled. Yeah, so did they um, cancel on him or did, I thought he had canceled on, I thought Biden had canceled on them. Oh, that's a good question. I thought that, that they had canceled they him. they may have like I, I don't one hundred percent know that but I because I, I when I was looking at the report from it I got the idea that like he went over there and visited the Israelis and kind of did that song and dance mm-hmm. and then instead of he was supposed to go meet with these other people and he just kind of dipped yeah um, I felt like because he was sleeping <laughs> because because yeah. all of the video I saw of him talking was like he was asleep. <laughs> So they didn't put him on the good stuff for this trip. Yeah, he doesn't make a lot. He, he man, is he mumble? Yeah. Um, I, you almost need subtitles with him. Oh yeah, no, without question. Especially these days, but yeah. uh, well, I, I mean, I think that the I think that the Arab leaders canceled because they're hearing the rhetoric that's coming out of the U.S. And the the truth is that the U.S. has given like complete support to what Israel is to doing. one side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and then you hear people, then you hear people like this. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. This yeah. is sick and we have to treat sick people the way they deserve to be treated and eliminate them. Okay. So that's, uh, that's Nikki Haley, who is the media's pick for the Republican candidate for president. It seems. Yeah. Um, true blue neocon. Um, that's by the way, her sentiment there about, we need to eliminate the sick people. That's also her healthcare plan. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but like, how, how do you even try to find a peaceful solution when people are talking like that? No, and, you can't. and it's not just in America. There's like a whole bunch of that coming out of Israel too. Israeli officials talking about that. They're just animals and yeah. You know, that there's all we can do is just wipe them all out and, you know, well, so, and uh, push them past Gaza into the Sinai desert and let them live in tents. And 
Yeah, I mean, that's, die in the sun. Like Something talking to people just... here, and even on the mainstream media here, like you, you hear that sentiment a lot. Like that's just, and the, you're not going to get the solutions that way, mm-hmm. um, because the 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 truth is is that even with the U.S. support, the rest of the Muslim world isn't going to allow that. Yeah, it can only be pushed so far. And if you want to blame Hamas for all this, yeah, I'm on board. Yeah, no, uh, I mean, 100%. Well, okay, to a point. I, I, for so, all of this, no, I can't say that. Because the idea that it's Hamas's fault that Israel is killing is civilians... Is treating them the way they are. No, that's obviously not Hamas's fault. Yeah. But... Um, but like I say, they are the the terrorist organization that's organizing this. So fair mm-hmm. enough that you want to yeah. you want to blame them. Um, but there's other things going on as well. So that kind of run counter to that idea, which yeah. is that since October seventh, um, more than sixty Palestinians have been killed in the West Bank. Yeah. Where Hamas doesn't hold any sway. Yeah. Hamas isn't in the West Bank. But yeah. still, more than 60 Palestinians have been killed by Israelis, settlers mostly, yeah. in the West Bank. And as I understand it, like some of these killings have been have gone on with uh, Israeli soldiers just looking on. Yeah. Not trying to intervene in any way. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the settlements that are there that are in the West Bank, and this is actually what I think this whole thing is about anyway. Yeah. Um, why? I, I would put forward the proposition like if you believe that Pal- the the Palestinians don't want a deal i would say that the if that's true the israelis also don't want a deal that they're yeah. happy with the way things are well, the right truth now is, because they want the land yeah and they want specifically the west bank like judea yeah um and uh and they've been allowing you know under this netanyahu far-right government that has taken over Israel over the last year or whatever. Um, they've allowed more settlements, which are illegal by international law. Occupied territory cannot be settled Yeah. Um, by international law. Like, the UN should be stopping this. Yeah. But they don't. Well, they can't because, because of us. <laughs> yeah, because we're the UN's police force. We, so yeah. if we're not enforcing it, then... Yeah. What's the U- who's the UN going to send in? Yeah. You know? Um, so, yeah, these Israeli settlements that are illegal under international law, they have uh, checkpoints all over the West Bank. Um, what they have done is they have tried to isolate all these little Palestinian communities so they can't, that they're not contiguous. They can't communicate easily or travel easily from one community to another yeah. uh, of Palestinians within the West Bank. Um, and uh, the interesting thing, like, th- let this sink in for a moment. So I said that there's been 60 deaths, uh, 60 Palestinians killed um, since October 7th. They've also, by the way, arrested something like 800 people in the West Bank or wow. detained, militarily yeah. detained, um, something like 800 people in the West Bank. But um, what I, uh, the, the part that I want to sink in is that this was an increase in violence of 40%. Oh, yeah. So since this terrorist attack, all these deaths yeah. is an increase in violence of 40%. So usually during this time period, yeah, we would have only had 40 deaths. Oh, is that all? Yeah. By the Palestinian, uh, of now. Palestinians yeah. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. the West Bank. I got you. That, there's something wrong with that, don't you think? A little bit, yeah. 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 So... Well, and it, it it brings up an interesting question is, so like, obviously I don't support Hamas and the attacks and, mm-hmm. and what happened, but you do have to like legitimately ask yourself, what are these people supposed to do? Like continue to live in these right. conditions? Oh, okay. I was going to say, are you talking about the Israelis or the Palestinians? No, the Palestinians. I, I mean, I think it's a yeah. good question for both sides, honestly. Well, I think it is too. Um, I didn't really think of it that way, but you're right. It is. Um, but particularly the Palestinians, like what? So if if you just say you lived in that society and were mm. being treated this way, like what are your options? And I'm not saying I, I'm not saying to choose violence. I'm just saying there's you, you're stuck in a situation where there's the same way with Russia with with um, NATO, mm-hmm. like uh, you, the man talking about Putin here. The man's done everything he could do. He's he's yelled and screamed and and everything. Mm-hmm. At some point, you have to choose violence. 
Yeah, I, and I don't, I don't Putin condone can say, that. I've been asking since two thousand eight. Yeah, that Ukraine not become a part of NATO. That we need to discuss security concerns. That I have legitimate security concerns, and we need to talk about this. We need to come to a solution. Yeah, and you've been ignoring me all this time. How yeah. do I make you not ignore me? Yeah, yeah. and and that's yeah, and, that's what the Palestinians have done here too. That's exactly what's happened here. That's what and, Max Blumenthal was saying. Yeah, and I don't I don't condone choosing violence, but at the same time, you've left these groups with no other options. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's just it. It's yeah, a bad they're captives. S- exactly. Well, so. well, and um, I don't know that if if I brought this up on the last podcast or not, but the the history here to to be aware of is that a lot of these people are either the people or the descendants of people. Cause it did happen 75 years ago yeah. at this point. Um, so most of them would be descendants of people yeah. um, who had property in Israel proper and were driven off that land. Yeah. They're like the people in the West bank and in Gaza and there's huge refugee camps in Lebanon and Syria as well of Palestinians um, they're, they're refugees from the land that they were driven off of. Yeah. And now you're being, now you're telling them that they need to move again. Yeah. <laughs> you can't have this land anymore either. Yeah. Um, and, and think of it as being akin to how, uh, how we treated, uh, Native Americans in this country. Yeah. Something valuable on their land. We're, we're, we're picking you up. It. We're, yeah, we're taking it from you. We're moving you somewhere else. Yep. And in some cases, we moved into a reservation and then found there was something valuable on that reservation, and we moved them again. Yeah. And this is a, a part of our history that we feel bad about. We feel shame about now, don't yeah. we? I mean, I, yeah. I think that's the general consensus. I, I would say if you polled people that, yeah, absolutely. You know, So why are we approving it by some other nation in modern times? Yeah, yeah. We should know just, better. Yeah, it's shameful. Yeah. Um. So... Uh, I, I don't, I don't see a good solution to this. Uh, unfortunately, like I said last week, the, you know, the first thing that happens is the violence needs to end. Oh, actually that's something interesting too. So, um, first thing that happens that needs to happen is the violence needs to end. But since, uh, since October 7th, um, Russia has introduced a, um, what do they call it in the UN? Um, Anyway, right. a proposal yeah. uh, for a ceasefire yeah. in the Security Council, and the U.S. voted it down. Really? Okay. No ceasefire. We're not having yeah. a ceasefire. Yeah. Um, then Brazil, just a couple of days ago, I guess, proposed a uh, uh, had a proposal for humanitarian pauses. Yeah. I, I'm not entirely sure what all this means, but essentially to to pause the fighting for periods so that uh, human to allow humanitarian aid to be um, brought into Gaza. Seems reasonable. Yeah, the U.S. was the only country on the Security Council to vote it down. Wow. Now That's... there were two abstentions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Russia being one of them. Um, I can't remember who the other one was. Might have been China, but yeah. I don't think it was actually. I think it was some Somewhere European nation. I think it was yeah. the U.K. Actually. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. I could be wrong about that, but anyway, um, and. Russia said that they opposed it because it didn't include uh, any any kind of um, ceasefire. Yeah, and that's what they want. That's now, I, want. I think that like, all right, you're moving in the right direction. You like you take still, what you, you can. You can still, that, yeah. 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 But it wouldn't matter because the U.S. has a veto vote. Yeah. Um. And so, yeah, the U.S. voted against it. And uh, there has been um, news has come out that the, there was a, a State Department, U.S. State Department memo that said that its people were to avoid using the following phrases All right. in any communications or press releases or whatever. Yeah. Um, de-escalation or ceasefire. Yeah. Uh, into the violence or bloodshed. Or restoring calm. These things are absolutely to be avoided by the U.S. state. The diplomatic the, wing yeah, right? of the U.S. federal government yeah. has the, said that we will not discuss any kind of end of violence or ceasefire or restoring calm to the area. We w- it is it is against our rules right now. We are not to talk about these things at all. We yeah. must continue the war. Well, we'll never get to those things if we can't discuss them. 
That's true. Like, I mean, then those, those, everything you just listed out ought to be the goal. Right. Like that should be what we're going towards. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, clearly our state department disagrees. Yeah. So great I mean, diplomats just, <laughs> we've got here in this country. Yeah. We only have one answer to anything and it's, it's, you know, drop more bombs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're paying for them, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, no, um, I, like I say, uh, the only, this is just a mess. The only real saving grace is, is I do think that, that the Muslim nations that are all around Israel, like remember Israel is surrounded by its enemies. That's something they always like to say is, you know, mm-hmm. we're surrounded by our enemies. Well, that is true. They are. And I do think that those, those nations will only allow Israel to go so far. Yeah. Um, and, and that, that may actually, the, the worry is, is that, okay, so those nations will only allow Israel to go so far and do so much. But at the same time, if Israel pushes its luck, we could be in real trouble here because some of those nations won't have any bones about going into Israel and stopping them by force. Well, and that's how we end up in a real situation where like a nuclear war could be on the table. Yeah. Um, I do have concerns about the U S trying to take advantage of this to, uh, to start wars against other nations around there that well, we that's, want. Well, that's the other to. threat. Um, yeah. The U.S. is moving two carrier groups, uh, several fighter-bomber squadrons, um, troops, et cetera, to the area. And um, then you got people like Lindsey Graham who keep talking about if if anybody, anybody does anything, if yeah. the Palestinians, Hezbollah, whatever, do yeah. anything to Israel— then we need to bomb Iranian oil facilities. It's yeah. always oil with him, by the way. He's like really into no matter what the, <laughs> the what's case, going what the on, thing is, the goal yeah. is to stop Iranian oil production, yeah. which by the way, would drive up oil prices in this country even more than they already are. Yeah. Like if you think you're paying too much for gas now, wait until we destroy all the Iranian oil facilities. Yeah. Um, well, it's an election coming up, so I doubt they're going to do that. Well, Lindsey Graham wouldn't care about that. Yeah, but Lindsey Graham don't have his finger on the button. Yeah, thank thankfully. <laughs> the button would have been pressed a million times by now. Yeah. Um, and and I was talking last week about how I was worried that this would shift towards Iran. Yeah. Um, I'm actually more concerned now that it would shift towards Syria. You think so? Yeah, I um, y- like you can connect Hezbollah to Syria, and it seems like it could provide an excuse for to go back into Syria and try and get Assad out again. Yeah. Um, the real problem with that, though, like the scary part about it, is that um, that Russia's there. Yeah, Russia's allied they, with so Syria they never and left. already I knew, I knew there. that they were there years ago, so they've never no, left. No, they're they're still helping to keep ISIS down. Okay. Yeah. Um, fighting our battles for us. Yeah. Uh, of course we were fighting both sides of that when we were there. <laughs> Still though. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah. So th- if, if we go into Syria, it will create a confrontation on another f- front with Russia. Yeah. And the idea may be, well, we know we've weakened Russia significantly. There's no way they can fight another battle I'll in tell Syria you, I've as heard well. That but I don't blue think in, that's true. <laughs> I've I've heard that till I'm blue in the face with it that we that yeah. we've diminished and Russia's no longer a power. Like like I hear that. Yeah. Well, and Lindsey Graham, I, I heard him just recently say again that we've um, you know reduced Russia's military. Uh, by 50 percent and i'm like no it's like four times the size as it was when this started like what do you yeah, think? yeah. they they had to build <laughs> yeah. it up to go do what they were doing yeah <laughs> like, um so i don't know these they're, they're these people are all crazy yeah 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 and, and some of them have their finger on the button yeah yeah <laughs> well, i don't know if he's crazy he's just senile yeah maybe is that, is no, that, that crazy? Is, is there is there a maybe in there about is that, that? Is there? I don't know. I don't know if that qualifies as crazy. I don't know if senile uh, is crazy. No, that I don't know. But but he's definitely senile. <laughs> like, yeah, I think mean, we can substantiate that. <clears throat> well, there's something wrong. That's for sure. Yeah. Um. So uh, okay, I guess I I want to close with this. All right. Um. If you're drawing a line between the deaths of Israeli civilians or children and Palestinian civilians or children. 
You need to reevaluate the way you look at these things. Yeah. Um, because all of these people are people. Kids are kids everywhere. Yeah. Whether they're Palestinian or Israeli or Ukrainian or Russian or Chinese or American or, you know, Venezuelan or whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, all these people are people. There's no one side that's more valuable than the other side. Yeah. And, and that's something that has, has been lost through all of this is mm-hmm. that just, just the humanity of it, mm-hmm. you know, that it's, that it's just okay to mow all these people down and we're, you know, it's, it's yeah. we, on either side. Like it's not, it's not okay. Yeah. Kids being killed in war is terrible no matter whose kids are being killed. Yep. And whether they're being killed intentionally or just indiscriminately, whether it's collateral damage or intentional, it doesn't matter. Like yep. kids being killed in war is terrible no matter whose kids it is. Yep. And I don't know. I, so that's yeah. I just yeah. You, add to you, that. You, go ahead. You, Do, well, say well, something. All I was gonna say is <laughs> like the goal should be to go for peace, mm-hmm. and I just at least from the U.S. side, like there's no push for that. Like, I mean, you've laid it out very clearly tonight that the U.S. is not interested in backing this down and creating a peace. Yeah. Um, they're just, they're, they're not, we're, that's not what we're trying to do right now. And, and that's what we should be trying to do. Yeah, it's, it's really unfortunate the direction that the U.S. has gone in terms of international relations. Um, there was a time when the U.S. used to be the country that people could look to that other nations could look to, to mediate and to settle disputes and to in, enforce agreements and so forth and do it in an... Uh, impartial. Yeah, in an impartial way. Yeah. Um, and we've completely lost that. We have no interest in settling any disputes. No. Uh, we are the biggest arms dealer in the world. No. We're we sell interest- something like We're- 40% of the total arms sold in the entire world are sold by the United States. Yeah. Um, we have a, a, well, some groups. Special interests have a significant um, interest in keeping chaos everywhere and maintaining conflict everywhere because they have a financial incentive to do so. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's made the world a worse place. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just damn capitalism. <laughs> oh Lord, no, let's not go down that <laughs> rabbit hole. No, as stated earlier, mm-hmm. like all the military contractors, they're not part of the free market. That, yeah. is, that is not a free market system. No, obviously <clears throat> not. It's just a shame because this country could do such a better job. Mm-hmm. Like, and and that when I say that, I don't obviously don't mean like us, the people. I mean like the politicians, the people pulling the strings. Yeah. Like this, this country could do a lot for good and has in the past and the past couple of decades, we've lost that, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's just, it's a shame. And somebody's going to step in to do that. Like it, it may be Russia, it may be China, but one of these other powers are going to step in as a true mediator and, and take that away from us. Yeah. Both of those countries have been doing that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, for years now. Yeah. Um, um in fact, I think I think we talked about it on this podcast uh, a couple of years back that um, the U.S. had decided that it was going to uh, relate through to the rest of the world through military power, that China had decided that it was going to relate to the rest of the world through economic power, yeah. and that Russia had decided that it was going to relate to the rest of the world through diplomatic power. Yeah. And we're kind of seeing the, the world that that creates right now. Yeah. You yeah, know. Um, so we, on that lovely note, we can, we can close that down there. Just, just remember that we're all people out here and all these disputes are between governments. Yes. Like that's, yeah, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) So people don't have war. People fight. Governments have war. Yeah, exactly. And they're the only ones who win or lose. Yeah. Well, we all lose, but yeah. Yeah. Everybody loses, yeah. um, including the governments, but they can feel like they won. Yeah, exactly. All right. Um, so, we'll, yeah, we'll close it out there. We have to post, we have to record next Thursday. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we were in that position today because, honestly, if we could have kicked it, I would have. Yeah. Um, if we um, can't record next Thursday, then we miss a week. So we're, we got to record next Thursday. There's yeah. already plans afoot. Yeah. So, um, yeah. 
So we expect to be here next Thursday. Absolutely. Um, in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook, subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean, uh, like and share, comment, subscribe. Um, you can leave reviews in some of those places. We really appreciate that. Uh, tell your friends and um, all those other things. Yeah, all the interaction helps us uh, get the message out, and um, we really appreciate all of you well, and helping us. Particularly right now, not that our message isn't normally an important one, but but particularly right now, like people are not. He, I, I can't tell you how many people I talked to this week that listened to the podcast and was like, like the last podcast and was like, that's a side of this I haven't heard. Yeah. Um. And so if you feel the same way, put it out there. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So. Please. Really appreciate it. Yep. And uh, so we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.